Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us for Workshop Quick Takes. This is another episode of Basic Auto. If you've been following that sub-series for any length of time, you've probably noticed that when it comes to vehicle safety for lifting and working underneath, I'm kind of a belt and suspenders guy. So, don't trust the emergency brake. Put wheel chocks if the vehicle can roll during your activities. If you're lifting the vehicle, don't just trust the jack for sure. Use jack stands, but don't rely on just the jack stands. Leave the jack somewhere that they can catch the vehicle if something slips, that kind of thing. Today I've got an ordinary oil and filter change coming up, but I also do my tires at the same time. 5,000 mile intervals, easy to just do both and be done with it. However, there's a trap and I've almost fallen into twice at different occasions because I got into one job and wasn't thinking about how my actions were going to affect the next one. Keep in mind this is a 2015 Honda Pilot. It is by no means the biggest vehicle you can put on jack stands or a jack, but it is one of the bigger ones that is out there for a family vehicle and it has some weight to it. And it Let's take a look at what I would normally do to lift the front of the vehicle for an oil and filter change. Now, there's nothing too special about this vehicle. Of course, you've got four wheels. You do have a couple rated jacking points to look for. Under the backside here, we've got this. It's a little bit bent because I've uh, caught it on something, but that spot right there under that rear bracket is a good lifting point for a jack. One of the problems with the way the back independent suspension here is designed is that there's not a lot of other good ones where these two arms come is pretty much what you're looking for. You can, of course, use these pinch weld points here. Those are designed for using your regular jack that comes in the back of the vehicle just for changing a tire or possibly a lifting point if you're using a uh, four point lift. On the front, however, and this is where you can get into trouble down here, is this little thing right here. There's a little rated jacking point right here. This point here is fairly far forward of the front suspension, and the front suspension happens to have a couple good spots to put jack stands. So, what does that mean if you leave your jack under here as a backup protection point, and then you start to lift up the rear? Well, let's take a look real quick. Okay, so far I have just used the front jack to lift the front of the vehicle off the ground. I've gotten about two inches under the front tires, once I lower the front suspension down into jack stands, I should be able to swap these out for my rotation pretty easily. Now in this particular vehicle, the underside of that arm mount there is a temptingly useful spot to put a jack. It's even got a nice round spot that this can slide up into. And it looks like I need to lift the jack just slightly so I can get one more notch out of that. Okay, we are firmly under there. This may or may not be the right way to jack up your own vehicle. Please use your own best judgment, but this is how I'm gonna do this one. So that side, complete. Other side needs the same thing. And then once that settles, that should be more than high enough to keep this tire off the ground, so I'm not gonna raise the vehicle any further. I'm now ready to very carefully and gently lower it back down. This is one of those steps where you don't wanna get in a hurry. You just want to see everything settle very gently onto the jack stands and lock into place with uh, no shifting or signs that something's going to pop. Okay, the vehicle is now resting very solidly on the jack stands and what I normally do at this point to proceed with work is very gently tension the jack under there without doing any further lifting. The weight of the vehicle is resting on the jack stands, but this has just enough tension on it that it will not move. So if the vehicle popped loose and dropped, the weight's gonna go onto the jack. Okay, so if I'm just gonna continue with the oil change and want a little extra clearance, this setup is fine. Everything I've just done this so far should keep this vehicle nice and safe. But here is where the trap can come in. At this particular garage, I have access to not one, but two Harbor Freight three-ton jacks. Now, they're Harbor Freight, but again, they're three-ton models. Usually don't lift any vehicles greater than about five to 6,000 pounds total, so they're more than adequate. But the problem is having two of them and thinking that I'm just gonna leave this one under here for my safety catch up front. And now I'm gonna go around the back and start lifting there. This is where you get a problem. At this point, the temptation is to go ahead and lift the rear wheels off the ground and go ahead and get my tire rotation done. Now I'm not gonna be working under the vehicle for this stage, so I'm comfortable leaving the back wheels just up on the jack instead of jack stands. But if I continue to lift the rear end, and I've done this twice before, so I know how easy it is to just get lost not thinking about what you're doing. If I continue to lift the rear end, as I lift this further, the weight will transfer off the jack stands onto the front jack and the vehicle will start to topple like this. 
Since I'm not going to destabilize our primary family vehicle on purpose, not even for social media hits, let's try an illustration. Here is the vehicle sitting on the ground and taking advantage of one of nature's simplest stable shapes, a rectangle. Yeah. Four tires, four points of contact, won't do anything else unless acted upon by a dramatic force. So let's introduce one in the form of a hydraulic floor jack. We have a rated lifting point under the front of the engine subframe, and this is a safe place to lift this vehicle. Remember, the goal is only to get the tires off the ground, not to lift the vehicle as high as possible. Now our support base forms a triangle. This is stable, provided the vehicle is not parked on a slope, but if you're getting underneath the vehicle, never trust your life to any device that doesn't have a locking mechanism. So, we look for a sturdy support point that will safely sit on jack stands. On a unibody vehicle, the pinch welds behind the front wheels are more of a short-term support, so it's usually better to look around under the engine subframe and suspension attachment points to that subframe, then go as far outboard as you can. With two jack stands in place, we're back to a rectangle, and all we need now is to lightly tension the jack as a failsafe. As long as you're working on a hard floor, this setup has a low risk of failing. Where you will get into trouble though, is if you proceed to lift the vehicle from the rear without remembering to pull that front jack out. And you won't realize what you're doing until the vehicle starts to rock precariously on its center axis. You can roll to left, you can roll to right, you can roll to left, you can roll to right, you can file a claim. No, no, don't file a claim, don't roll a vehicle, or more likely drop it down onto the jack stands. Back up, lower and pull that front jack out, then lift the rear. We're now back to a triangle support, and unless you have another pair of jack stands to secure the rear end, this is not a solution for working under the vehicle. But for quick wheel swaps or rotations, it will normally hold. You have to evaluate your own skill and safety level, but for us, this works. So don't continue down this road without removing the front jack first. And for what it's worth, I did loosen these while it was still on the ground off camera. This Ryobi impact gun is great for just getting the bolts on and off, but it's not going to be able to apply the torque necessary to finish them. And it's certainly not a precision torque device. And you, of course, do need to precisely torque your lug nuts so you don't over or under tighten them. Since these tires do not have directional tread and can be installed on either side of the vehicle, for the sake of being consistent, I do the fronts go to back, back swap and go to front routine. And what that also allows me to do is get both of the front tires moved to the back, lower the back again, and then finish up on the front. And like most people who don't want to deal with cross-threaded lug bolts, I try to hand start them a few turns before applying any kind of electric or pneumatic tool. And finally, you might note that I'm also doing the opposite corners star pattern just to try and equalize the torque around the wheel, even though this isn't final tension yet. Here's my other front tire waiting for me when I get there. If you always get in the habit of following that star pattern, even when you don't have to, like removing lug bolts, it just becomes an automatic habit to do it every time. And this one is now destined for front left. Those still need to be torqued on the ground, but I'm at the point now where I can carefully lower the rear end so that the vehicle is less precarious. Now just to make sure I'm not jerking the vehicle around while I work, I'm not going to do final torque on the rear wheels yet. I'm gonna make sure I've got all four wheels on and the vehicle is back on the ground. So that's gonna be my very last step. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do my oil change. And so what I'm going to do is put the jack back under the front point and that'll give me some additional stability while I'm under the vehicle. I can do this now that the rear is back on the ground. Again, not tight, tight, just lightly tensioned. Enough that there's hydraulic pressure in here, so that if something slipped, it's not going to just risk blowing out a seal when it lands on it. Front wheels can now go back on whenever you choose, but the advantage of doing the oil and filter change at the same time the tire rotation on this particular vehicle is that the oil filter is right up in here and it's very easy to get to it while this front tire is off anyway. And the other thing you usually want to do is check your brakes. I can see these fronts still have some meat on them, but they've probably got only about another 10,000 miles, so I should make a mental note that I'm gonna need to do these soon. Also, I know these rotors are slightly warped because I got a bit of a shimmy when I brake.
This one's a 17 mil if you're curious. Fortunately, this catch pan is large enough to leave underneath the drainings and under the oil filter at the same time because I'm going to get a little bit of oil out of here when I loosen this. And while it is more or less hand tight, I've been doing some home improvement work that's preventing me from getting a good grip on it, so I am going to use a filter wrench to loosen that. There we go. In theory, these cartridge hand filters are supposed to be hand tight, but I usually like to add about another quarter to half turn just in case. Unfortunately, that does get on the control arm. I don't know a good way to prevent it on this vehicle. I'm sure somebody's got a method. The Honda Techs probably have a special funnel or something, but it's easy enough just to wipe it off. There's plenty of access right here. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but doing that will prevent it from collecting too much excess dirt and grease up here. Okay, a couple of usual prep tricks. First of all, make sure that this ring, this gasket here, came all the way off cleanly. Apply a little bit of oil on the fresh filter. For what it's worth, I was using a Napa Gold filter before. I wasn't able to get to Napa this time. I went ahead and grabbed a mobile one at another auto parts store. I don't have a strong preference. Uh, any good quality name will do. Although one thing I do see about the Napa that's interesting is, but the gasket ring there is quite a bit thicker on the Napa one. Don't know that it needs to be, but just interesting to see. Now I do habitually use Mobile One oil in my vehicles. I don't know that it's necessarily better than Valvoline Synthetics or whatever the other ones are. Now since Honda wisely installed this one in the vertical position, I can partially pre-fill the filter, let the media in there soak up and get as much oil in there as I reasonably can before reinstalling the filter. And that will help with preventing a brief oil starvation when this fires back up for the first time. That's how much oil I've put in there so far, and it's a little over half full at the moment, so the filter and its media actually do soak up a lot of material. And that's probably full enough because I still got to get the uh, screw thing up in there. Okay. That's definitely better than hand tight, so we should be good. Just like oil filters, oil pan bolts don't usually want to be too tight. It's provided you got the correct washer on there, which this one still has. I'll give it one more twist. But if you have a stamped steel pan, you can actually strip the threads out by over torquing it. Or in this case, if you have a cast aluminum pan, you can either strip the threads or just plain crack it by over torquing it. So that there is plenty. Okay, oil filter is back on tight. Oil pan bolt is back on. That means the last steps I need to do this evening are get this wheel on, lower the vehicle, put oil in the engine, torque my lug bolts, and then when the vehicle is fully and finally ready, I'll start it and make sure before I leave the garage that I don't have any oil dripping from anywhere unobvious, which might indicate, for example, that the seal there didn't quite get on tight. Now that very rarely ever happens as long as you keep your workspace clean and don't get a piece of dirt trapped in there or something, but never hurts to check each time you do this job before leaving the garage. These are supposed to be set at about 94 foot-pounds. I found I can get it within a hair's breadth uh, by hand just by putting my weight on it based on my height and standard 18-inch breaker bar, but here's a torque wrench just to prove it can be done correctly. Remember, one click and only one. And one more check just in case because one of those went farther than the others. Okay. Okay, that's one wheel down, three more to go. Ain't that pretty.
Last step is to make sure I got oil in here in spite of the fact that it's kind of hidden down behind this thing. I find it's easier just to pull off this plastic cover so I can get to there with the funnel a little better. Nice flathead screwdriver is all you need on this. Lefty loosey quarter turn and off it comes. That makes it slightly easier to reach around the fuel rail here and get this oil cover off. SAE 0W20. And it is going to take most of five quarts. And yeah, we're almost at the top of the thing. Shouldn't have any problem just adding the rest of what's in here. Check it again. Yeah, overfilled slightly, but this is 120, almost 122,000 mile engine. So it does use a little oil. I'm not too worried about the little bit of extra in there. Okay, that should be everything put back together. I rotated the tires, I retorqued the lug bolts, I changed the oil, drained the pan, put the bolt back in, pulled off the filter, pre-filled the new filter and installed that back on tight, added about four and a half quarts of oil, retightened the oil cap, and put the plastic engine cover back on. So the last step now is just to restart it, make sure that I don't get a low oil pressure warning light on the dash, and that there are no leaks from underneath. Cool. The oil light self-checked and turned off. No oil dripping down from over here where the filter or the plug is. One more random fact you may not know about on this vehicle. If you look in your spare tire kit, there's a recovery hook. Pull this cover off. That recovery hook screws in here. And that is how you can safely pull the vehicle out of a bad situation rather than try to yank around one of the suspension members. Job done, ready to go. Main point of doing all that, of course, was to show you that big safety issue because like I said, I've encountered it twice by mistake. And so if you're one of those cautious types who likes the belt and suspenders approach to safety, make sure you don't leave two points of contact and then try to attempt raising or lifting the vehicle at another spot without thinking about the consequences. Stay safe, but not too safe. See you next time, whenever that is. My voiceover is soothing and calm like there ain't nothing wrong. Has anyone seen my phone?